So Roblox recently announced the removal of linked source scripts that is going to take place on May 20. So as of recording this video, there's about less than a month before this feature is going to become obsolete. But to new developers who've seen this post, they might be very confused thinking, what the heck even are linked source scripts and why are they even important? Or at least why were they important versus what we have now with packages? In this video, I'm gonna try and explain what linked source scripts were all about when it came to using these inside of Roblox games during its earlier days, and you might learn a thing or two from this video, so sit back, relax, and let's get straight into the video. Alright, let's think about this for a minute. I'm gonna try and paint a picture in your head to help you understand um, what linked source scripts are, uh, why they were important in uh, the early days of Roblox, and why they're not exactly used in modern day Roblox in favor of other things. So, basically, as Roblox scripting developers, we deal with scripts on a regular basis. I think we all know this. But if, let's say, we're dealing with multiple scripts that either have reusable code or literally copycat code where it's like it's just copied and pasted from one script to the next with no changes to them, then uh, it would then we basically have a scenario which, let's say, those kill bricks over there. So if we looked at each of these kill bricks and they all had a script embedded inside of each one of them uh, that basically has the player touch it and then they die and things like that, if we had a script for every single one of these parts, then it's going to lead to a lot of inconsistencies, issues, and all that sort of stuff. Because if, let's say, you wanted to make a change to one of these scripts, then you would have to go back and make changes to all of these other different scripts um, to reflect the changes on every single one of them. And in one of my tutorials on collection service, uh, this basically tackles the problem where we had one script um, control all of these by adding a tag to them. But again, I want you to keep in mind, um, <laughs> linked source scripts are a very old feature on Roblox and we didn't have things like collection service. And we also didn't have things like module scripts that also allowed us to have shared code uh, between different scripts or different parts of the game and things like that. So with that uh, understanding in mind, let me show you a little bit more of what I have going on here. So what we have here are three scripts. So when we have these three scripts that basically do the exact same thing and we want to make changes to, let's say, one of them to reflect the changes on all of these other ones, we would use something called a linked source script right here. Now, a linked source script, in the best way I can explain it, is a linked source script is basically uh, an external script that you can upload to Roblox as an asset. And when you add this to your game and have scripts that are connected to this linked source script, then the first thing that would happen is this script would uh, have everything that this linked source script would have uh, with its code. But also, any change you make to the linked source script, it would reflect those changes onto each and every one of the scripts that are attached to it. Now, this is very useful if you want to um, just modify one script and have it be reflected on multiple different scripts, but it's also very useful if you want to have a linked source script be used uh, in different places or even different games across Roblox that you own or that um, other developers own and things like that. So with this in mind, if we were to look at that example with the kill bricks over there, the linked source script would basically just be the kill brick. And if we added this inside of our game uh, and had a script in each one of these kill bricks connect, be connected to the linked source script, then we only need to change the linked source script to reflect the changes in all of these other scripts that are down here and things like that. So you can kind of see how this was a pretty big thing to developers back in the earlier days of Roblox. But now we have things like module scripts and we also have things like collection service that helps us with organization, uh, security, and all of those other things when it comes to working with uh, scripts in inside of Roblox Studio. Now, there are security issues with using linked source scripts because I want you to imagine it like this. If you, let's say, had a linked source script be uploaded to Roblox and you gave that linked source script to somebody else, then they would basically be using that linked source script in their game. Uh, and if you yourself, like as the developer, made a change to this linked source script, then this would reflect the changes onto uh, the other developer's game if they decide to add your linked source script to their game. And I'm pretty sure the way this works is you could basically just modify the script without the need to update that other person's game 
And so you could do a bunch of very bad things uh, or hacky related stuff if you decide to do it like this. Now, I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure just from thinking of the scenario, I think it would be pretty bad. So module scripts and collection service do sort of supersede the link source script feature. But the biggest feature I'd say that supersedes it is packages, which uh, I'm actually going to make a dedicated tutorial video on uh, in the future. But packages basically do the exact same thing as linked source scripts, except what you can do instead is create assets and scripts that are that you can incorporate inside of your game and make changes to them and reflect those changes across multiple different places and games like I just mentioned before. It's just a more modern version of linked source scripts. And with that being said, let me show you more of what I have to offer for you when it comes to linked source scripts. Okay, so I've pulled up a YouTube video from Winterleaf56 who basically demonstrated the use of linked source scripts. Now, I would just show you how to do this normally in Roblox Studio, but the ability to create linked source scripts have been gone for like the past couple years. It's only now when Roblox is saying that uh, you can no longer make any changes to uh, linked source scripts whatsoever, but they will still be able to run uh, inside of Roblox games that still have them. But essentially what's happening with this video is um, this guy, he's publishing his Roblox game so that he can um, demonstrate linked source scripts because that's what you had to do before you're able to create linked source scripts and things like that. So what this guy is trying to do is create tycoon droppers. Um, and as you know, a tycoon dropper basically has the script that allows you to drop parts from the dropping um, tip at the top of the dropper. So this guy basically creates three droppers and what he does from here is he takes one of the scripts and he clicks on this button that says create new linked source. Now, of course you can't do this anymore, but uh, from this video, he demonstrates that you can create a new linked source script and it can be referenced by scripts in your game, allowing you to update all of them at the same time. And so once you create the, the name of the linked source script and you hit create, then it's going to show down here inside of the games uh, tab, which um, is now called asset manager. Um, and there was also this folder called scripts that basically had all of your linked source scripts um, for you. And so when that happened, you basically had your script have a linked source property that is made that is referencing this dropper script that is now a linked source script. And um, if you went through each one of your scripts that uh, that embedded this new linked source script, then any change you made to this dropper script can now be reflected on all these other scripts. So I'm hoping that this makes sense to you. Like uh, this guy is basically gonna demonstrate him writing a print statement right here. Uh, and then once he does that, then he goes through uh, each of the scripts and shows you that the, the changes have been reflected through that. And that is essentially how linked source scripts worked in Roblox Studio. But of course, we now have features that combat this, that, that makes this feature obsolete in modern day Roblox. So I asked ChatGPT uh, to give me some examples and use cases of developers using uh, these linked source scripts inside of their games. And there are a few notable ones that I do want to point out in this video. The first one being, uh, the use of version history. Now, if you don't know what version history is, it's basically a concept in software development or development in general, where we basically have a version history of the thing we're trying to build or the thing we're trying to program or develop or whatever it may be. So linked source scripts allowed us to have a version history whenever we wanted to ever go back to a previous version if we didn't like the new one. So I can show you what this would look like if um, I did this with a script instead of a linked source script. So I'm gonna go on the right side, hit the plus sign next to server script service, and I'm gonna insert a script. So at the very start, we have this line with print hello world. So this is, let's call it version one of the script. If I were to insert, let's say another print statement here and say, how are you doing? Then this is going to basically be the second version of this script. And we'd be able to push these changes to um, the new script. So if we were to basically go to any other game or place that used the script, then it would all be updated to be this one with version two. But if we do not like this version, then we can actually revert back to a previous version because of the script's version history. So if we were to revert back to version one, then basically it would just look like this. And then, uh, it would be reflected on all, uh, 
games that use this linked source script. That's like a basic understanding of version history and linked source scripts were able to do that. But of course, nowadays you have things like version history with Roblox places. And uh, if you use, let's say a different IDE like Visual Studio Code, then you can also link GitHub, which basically specializes the whole version history stuff. And that is a much better system than using a version history of, of linked source scripts. But I can see how this would be helpful because if you were to, let's say, beta test a new version of a script, like let's say, we had the previous scripts like this. If we were to test this and for some reason it didn't work out, then we can just revert to a previous version. And that's how we'd be able to create scripts without breaking the game. If we wanted to test something and see whether it did work or did not work, then we can revert back to a previous version if we ever wanted to. And that is one thing we were able to do with linked source scripts. And I hope that's made sense to you. Another thing you might do with linked source scripts is have a framework or API that you might use across multiple different projects that you might have. So I found this 2D module script, and if I were to imagine using this 2D module script across uh, all of these different games that I want to uh, incorporate this framework in, then this would basically be a linked source script because all I would need to do is basically create a script and embed this uh, linked, script, uh, linked source script onto it. And so if I made changes to this linked source script, then it would be reflected across all the games that use it. Now, I would be careful about doing this if um, for developers that did do it like this. Um, if you wanted to have the exact same framework across your different games, then this would basically work. But uh, if let's say you wanted to make changes to the game that you're currently working on and these changes were reflected um, across all your other games, then your other games might break because of the changes that you made to this script. So I would say like if this is a um, a helper script or some or a framework that you know you want to use consistently across all the games, then by all means, this is the best way to do it, I would say. Like that's one of the biggest purposes of using like source scripts. And so that's another practical example you might use for this. Uh, like some sort of framework that you might use. Um, maybe this could be in the form of a combat system or maybe in the form of of something that you would just reuse across all your different games that you know are not gonna uh, affect the game in any negative way. I hope I've been able to paint a picture of how these linked source scripts worked, and I hope you learned something out of this video. Now, to summarize, linked source scripts are going to be removed in uh, a little under a month as of recording this video, and I wanted to explain the concept of how these things uh, were used back in the earlier days of Roblox, and I hope you were able to learn something out of this. Now that Roblox has been evolving to become a much better platform with uh, features that are just better and also more secure than uh, what Roblox used to have with linked source scripts, with now things like packages and also module scripts and collection service that helps us with these sorts of things. Now, technically, linked source scripts aren't going to be removed forever. <laughs> like the, the, the title was kind of clickbait, but also kind of not. So linked source scripts was basically discontinued in 2019, where we were not able to create any more linked source scripts, but we were still able to modify linked source scripts and update them if we already added them previously. But now, once these changes are reflected across all Roblox games, we can no longer even make changes to these linked source scripts at all. But the only thing that remains is these linked scripts will still work in modern day Roblox. It's just you cannot make any changes to them um, once, once the update comes next month. So that is something I wanted to elaborate quickly before ending off this video. And so with that being said, that's basically going to be the end of this video. If you're new to this channel and you want to learn more about how to make a game on Roblox, then I encourage you to watch my advanced scripting tutorial series, which I will have the first episode for you right here uh, in this video. Go click on that if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.